What is your we never speak of this again story? Mine happened a couple years back. I was just minding my own business, going about my day, when I get a text from my dad. Of course, I read it, since it's from my dad. The text reads, can there be Slava playing tonight's entertainment? I need you. Me and my sister once found a whip in a cupboard so it's easy to put two and two together. Five minutes later, the most sincere, oops, I have ever seen pops up on my screen. I never responded to that text, and I have never brought it up. But we both know it happened. When my best buddy and I were still in high school we decided to go up an old mountain road and do some underage drinking in his car. We were up there for a while and all of a sudden we see headlights behind us. Fearing it was a cop we hid the beer and my friend looks over to me and says just follow my lead. Turns out it was a cop. We rolled down the windows and he asked what we were up to this late at night up in the mountains. I'm sitting in the passenger seat freaking out hoping he can't smell any of the beer. My friend looks over at the cop and in the calmest voice says, It's our two year anniversary tonight and we were trying to get away from everything. He then reaches over, picks up my hand and kisses the back of it. The cop looked at us for another few seconds and told us to have a nice and safe night. Just another couple of gay boys enjoying themselves up in the mountains at 1am. My brother and I were very poor back in 2009. He was about 19. I was about 10. We were in poverty, scraping by on quarters. One day, out aid of Walmart, we found a McDonald's Ursua salad container full of cheese fries. We ate every bite. This happened a year and a half ago on a family trip to Mexico. It was very humid and hot during the day, and since we are in Mexico, I had been drinking since sunrise, and it was now time for bed. You can probably see where this is going, anyways. I had a very vivid dream that I was in the bathroom at the resort and had just started to unzip my pants in my dream to urinate when I woke up. By now, it was far too late. I woke up next to my younger brother, covered from the waist down in pee. There was even a pee stain that looked somewhat like a chalk outline of an obese man. My brother and I are quite close and are always brutal towards each other in a fun way. I expected him to roast me and wake up my parents to embarrass myself. I woke him up and he knew immediately. He helped me strip all the bedding and throw it into the hallway for the cleaning crew to pick up. All of this at 6am with no hesitation whatsoever. We woke up a couple hours later to my parents questioning us why we were sleeping on a bed with no sheets or blankets. And we both said we sweat too much throughout the night and got rid of them. To this day, we haven't spoken about it, but both know deep inside that my 18 year old self pee at the bed. I love that kid. Rumors told me to text him when I got home so we could smoke a cigarette. I thought that's f I'm dumb. He'll be able to clearly hear me coming home. So I knocked on his bedroom door and waltzed in, only to see him taking a deep ick or masturbating. I'm still not sure which. He jolted up and said something along the lines of whoa hey, and I just said you hh hi, and then we went outside and smoked a cigarette. My college roommate and I were in Italy, and we were lost at a small town train station where there's no English and no one spoke English at all. The way the train station is set up is that we have to take stairs underground and take stairs back up to cross the platform. We were trying to figure out which train to take and ended up going back and forth since we barely understood any Italian. After a few trips going up and down, we decided to just cross back and forth across the tracks. This was way I I I before smartphones. So we were in the middle of the tracks while I used a compass to figure out which direction Florence was. Then we realized it was noisier than usual, looked up, and saw a train coming. In panic. We ran in front of the train to the platform across instead of backwards to safety. Realized we nearly won Darwin Awards. We agreed not to tell anyone about how dumb we were. Walked in on a close family member masturbating in the living room. They saw that I saw. Immediately left to deal with something else. Came back and asked how their day had been. They said good thanks. My, now ex, husband had to have thyroid surgery a few years ago. He was having a lot of swelling, so they gave him some Percocet to take. 
Anyone who has taken Percocet before knows that it might work very well, but it's not without side effects. One of those side effects happens to be constipation. We knew this would happen, my husband and I are both doctors. I urged him, and urged him to keep eating fiber, or take a stool softener or something. He laughed it off, babe. My bowels are amazing. Nothing's going to happen to me. Days passed and he continued to heal. Requiring less and less of the medication. I noticed his appetite hadn't picked up much, but I thought a. Hey, cut him a break. He just had surgery. That night I found him on the couch clutching his stomach and scowling. Immediately I knew what was up, and said as gently as I could now will you take the stool softener? He relented. Bows passed. Stool softeners don't work instantly, and they were up against days of hardened poo. My husband began pacing, and sweating. He has a pretty high pain tolerance and I began to feel alarmed. We massaged his poor, distended tummy, and you could literally feel the lumps of hard poo. He's a pretty thin guy, not much subcutaneous fat. After hours of stool softeners, tummy rubbing and fluids he started to really sweat. Now I was really worried, had he puffed. Suddenly he leaped up, ran into the bathroom, and slammed the door. I sat outside waiting for a noise. A fart. A wail. Something. Finally I heard him sob my name. I walked in and my cool, aloof husband was bawling his eyes out. Sitting on the toilet, and pushing on his stomach like an uncomfortable little kid. He turned green, and I immediately recognized that face. I had just enough time, to grab a trash can to catch the vomit that came streaming out. Seconds before an enormous shot and a huge blast of diarrhea tear chunks, there was my surgeon husband, crying, barfing, shooting and hanging onto my arm for dear life. It was so painful to watch, and to this day he says it's the only time he's truly been in 10 tenths pain. Yeah. We didn't really talk about that day much after that. Though he never did disrespect the constipating powers of Nux from that day forward. Not so much we never spoke of it again. But I've never spoken of it. In college. Skipped the day to play some Cody. Got bored and decided to take matters into my own hands. My dorm room was on top floor. Fourth. And the window blinds were open. As I was furiously taking out my frustrations. A window washer came up to the window on a suspended scaffold. We locked eyes for a second. And he left my window unwashed. And slowly went back down. Steve bring it down. My, now ex, wife won cess in her hand, while we were driving down the interstate, because it was too far to the closest bathroom. To answer some questions for y'all, she held it in her hand for a few miles, until we made it to a gas station. I offered several times to pull over, so she could at least do it on the side of the road, but she refused. To this day in a time I hear somebody say handy yes that's all I can think about. Growing up, we were poor. And as a teen I didn't really have access to porn or whatnot. But I was quite a writer. So I would write exotic fiction as a release. In a spiral. Well. One day after writing a particularly sordid story. I kinda came to. And realized I shouldn't leave that stuff around. I went to the kitchen. Intending to throw the spiral away. Set it down. Got a drink. The phone rang. I answered. And left the spiral in the kitchen. Forgotten. An hour later my mother comes to me with the spiral and questions. I won't get into it, but she described how a lot of my stories wouldn't really ever happen and were a bit extreme. She threw it away and it never came back up. My dad found out how to stream videos from his phone to the TV. He's testing it out and 16 year old me asks to have a go. I scroll randomly through all these untitled videos he has in his phone and click on one. The dirtiest filthiest gang bang porn pops up on the TV in front of both of us, and I just had him the phone and walk out. Never spoke about this since. When I was around 12 years old, my family was on vacation somewhere. Sleeping arrangements, me slash mom on one bed and brother slash dad on the other. Except my dad had this effing annoying habit of getting in bed and cuddling with mom in the morning. EWW. Anyways. One night. I had a very vivid dream. I dreamt that my period started, and the blood was gushing. Like. Holy fuck. There was so much blood you guys. And in the dream. I was running to the toilet. To try to contain the blood. Plot twist. Pee dream got the best of me. I woke up a few minutes later soaked in pee. 
I'm pretty sure my mom and dad felt it too. And my pyjamas stank like pee for the rest of our trip. No one said anything about it. P. S. I'm so. So sorry for any hotel cleaning people who have to deal with this stuff every day. So I'm in high school and got trashed at a party. Somehow I made it home. In the middle of the night I drunkenly wander into my parents bedroom. Sit on my dad's hamper and take a good long piss. My dad woke up in the middle of it and pushed me back into my room. I wake up in the morning and go to the living room and see dad. He starts cracking up and told me what happened. Said we won't tell anyone and to go upstairs and clean out his hamper. Ended up having to buy him a new hamper. My mom never said anything about it, so I have no idea if she knew. My dad passed away about 10 years ago. Since that time my mom told me a story about my dad getting drunk one night shortly after they were married and she woke up in the middle of the night to see him peeing in his hamper. Apparently, I'm totally my father's daughter and have still never told anyone about it. A girl at party got wasted and puked all over. After that everyone left except for a few of us to help take care of her. While she was vomiting into a bowl she began alternating between puking and farting. We all looked at each other and busted up laughing. This was high school, so we all agreed to never tell anyone. My dad kept a huge suitcase full of pee and stashed in the basement of my childhood home. I used to sneak down there and watch such memorable titles as Interview with the Milkman and Butman's European Vacation. Several years into my secret viewings, my parents put the house up for sale. They took my younger siblings with them on a car trip up north for the weekend in the city they wanted to move to. I stayed home and proceeded to have a party one night inviting a bunch of my friends. We trashed the house, drank a bunch of beer, and of course, watched all of my dad's porn. Flash forward a few months later, we sell the house and are in the process of packing. I get home from school one afternoon and my father is standing in the driveway with his most terrifying angry dad face. My dad is 6 feet 4, 250 pounds, tattoos, former correction officer in a maximum security prison. I walk up to him and he says why are you snooping through my ass in the basement? I reply. What IDK what you're talking about says bulls. Those videotapes. Some of them aren't even mine and I have to give them back to someone who let me borrow them. There's some missing. Go down the street and tell your effing stoner friend to give them back. I bet he stole them. Do it or I'll tell your mother what I found in your room. He holds out my Zippo collection. A glass bowl. Various sleeping pills and caffeine pills I'd take. My dad was blackmailing his 14 year old son to return his PN. I got on my bike, rode down the block to my friends, knocked on his door, and asked for my dad's pawn back. He sighed and reluctantly gave me several VHS tapes he swiped from the party night. I rode back up to my house, and in the driveway in broad daylight, my 14 year old self handed my father back his PN. It was never spoken about, or hinted at ever again. I like to think that my dad and I came to understand each other better that day. Came home drunkenly with Rumert. He did the whole naked man thing in his doorway. Saying has been a track trip to me blah blah. We fool around. I give him a hand job. He goes limp and I realize he has fallen asleep in my hands. It was so awkward I want and fell asleep in my own bed in the other room. Woke up. Never mentioned it. Nothing. He moved out the next week. I still cringe thinking about it. We're still friends though.